So the horse I'm trimming in today's video is a big Tennessee walking horse and I've been trimming him for quite a while now. And two things that still kind of bother me about this horse's hooves are one, his contracted heels. I feel like his frog should be a bit wider and flatter and that his heel bolts would spread out a little bit more ideally. And the second thing is that he has a long toe. And that long toe always gets worse during the winter when we have lots of wet weather. It's currently been wet for about three to four months. And it's really hard for the hooves to stay collective and not get distorted when we have an environment that is as wet as it has been. So the first, one of the first things I do is I address this frog and then I address his toe. And after I rasp this hoof, I'm actually going to take even more toe to try to bring his breakover back. Because for every extra centimeter of toe, it adds an extra 50 kilograms of pressure to the back of the foot. So having a short toe is very important for the long-term soundness of the horse. And yeah, every, every trim, I'm just fighting this horse's toes. And he's improved a lot. When I first started trimming him, um, as you can see in this video, the yellow line represents the halfway point of the horse's hoof. It's about the same length behind as it is in front. The purple line is where I wish the halfway point was, and the teal line is where the end of the toe ideally would be. So his hooves were super distorted when I first started working on him. And then you can see right here in this picture that I have improved uh, this hoof quite a bit. The yellow line is once again where the halfway mark is. The purple line is where I would like it to be. And the teal line is where I wish the toe ended. So either this horse has an elongated coffin bone and that's just the way his hooves are going to continue to look um, or there's still some more room for improvement. So I hope it's the latter and that I can continue to bring his toes back and collect this hoof up well, both his front hooves and bring that breakover back. But, you know, I guess time will tell. And right now he's sound and comfortable, so I'm happy. Now I've moved on to this horse's hind hoof. And this horse has absolutely beautiful hind hooves. So I don't have to really address its balance too much. I remove any parts of the frog that I think might have a little bit of thrush in them. But really that's it. I could, I could almost leave his frog as it is. I'm trying to open up his grooves a little bit so that the frog doesn't lay over and trap any material in the collateral grooves that could lead to any type of fungal or bacterial infection. But otherwise, that frog is beautiful. I wish the frogs on his front feet looked like the frogs on his hind feet. Then this horse would just have absolutely perfect frogs. So now I'm just addressing his bars a little bit. Uh, but as you can see, there's a big difference between how his bars grow on his hind hooves versus how they grow on his front hooves. They don't grow as tall, they don't lay over on the sole, and they don't migrate as far down the frog as they do on his fronts. So I'm really just removing a little bit of height, but I'm not having to correct any distortion. I just don't want those bars contacting the ground first. Uh, I would really like them to be just a little bit passive to the hoof wall. And then he's grown slightly higher on the lateral side of his hoof and not quite so high on the medial side. So I'm probably not going to nip all the way down his hoof wall. I'll use my nippers to remove the bulk of the material initially, but I'll use my rasp for almost anything else. So now I'm just smoothing the, any of those nipper marks I created while also maintaining the balance in this hoof. I'm gonna take my nippers now and remove the extra thickness that is in his hoof wall around his toe. This toe though has not migrated forward like that front hoof we just saw. Okay, it's completely different. He's just grown wall that is thicker at the toe, but the toe has stayed where it's supposed to be. And because it has stayed where it's supposed to be, none of the other structures have migrated forward as well. You can see that in the heel area, I did not have to pull his heels back. I removed a little bit of excess height, but that was it. His heels are terminating back where his soft tissue begins. So really no distortion in this hoof almost at all, which is rare. Normally on, especially these gated horses, I will see flaring on either the medial or lateral side, depending on how much twist those hind legs have while they're moving, while the horse is gating. So this horse, 
the wear pattern on his hinds tells me that he moves very straight when he's gating, which is awesome. Don't get to see that too frequently. Um, but the straight movement will really help him maintain his joints over time. And yeah, just probably the most beautiful hind hooves of any horses on my book on this horse. I met him on a sunny day in late July and everything turned upside down. I almost lost track of time as weeks went by. I couldn't get him off my mind. I told him I want that great love, like standing in the middle of a bonfire. You don't know how you got there, but you hold tight, knowing that you can't get burned. Just tell me how we lost track of everything but each other. I honestly don't know. And tell me how we messed up, drifting away from each other. Didn't want to let you go. So this right front foot looks very similar to this horse's left front foot. You can see that he likes to grow a long toe on this front foot, just like the other one. And that toe starts to drag the other structures of the hoof forward. You can see that the bars on this front, unlike the hinds, are trying to migrate further down the frog. On the hinds, they terminated about halfway down. And on this front hoof, they pretty much have traveled all the way down the length of the entire frog. So I know that that toe is going to be, have to be brought back on this front as well. And right now I'm addressing the frog because you can see that in the central sulcus of this frog, it's, it's kind of pinched and there's a bit of a crevice back there that might be hum, harboring fungus and bacteria. So I'm trying to open it up the best I can without harming any of the live tissue on this hoof. You can see I started with my big loop knife and then I went to my nippers and now I'm using my small loop knife because I'm trying to remove that material without harming any of the live tissue. So it's kind of a delicate process. You don't want to pull too hard and risk misking and hitting a heel bulb and making the horse bleed or something like that. So I'll remove as much material as I think I safely can. So now I've moved on to those bars that I said previously have migrated down the sole, down around the apex of the frog. And it's really important to remove that material because if it sits there for too long, it can cause bruising, which can then become an abscess over time. So the last thing I want is for any of these horses to get abscesses because I did not remove enough material. So in my opinion, removing some bar material on a lot of these horses' hooves is quite important. So now I've moved on to nipping the wall. And just like the other front foot, that wall at the toe area is much thicker and longer. So I'm probably going to remove more as I continue through this trim. Well, I guess he needed his hoof back. <laughs> this, this horse has been awesome, though, through this trim. He has stood so well. So really proud of him. Uh, really enjoyed trimming him that day. So I've got his hoof back up again and I'm going to continue smoothing down that wall. And as you can see, I did not nip all the way around the hoof wall on this hoof because this horse hits a bit harder on the lateral side of his foot, the outside of his foot. So there's not nearly as much wall material to remove in that area. So I started my nip from that medial heel and worked my way around through the toe. And then I moved on to my rasp because my rasp removes a lot less material. And I'm trying to bring balance to this hoof. So I'm not just going to do a blind nipper run all the way around. Uh, I'm going to look at the hoof, see where it has the most material, and then decide what tools to use where. So now that I've taken that wall down, I have a few high spots in my bars that I needed to address with my knife again. I really don't want the bars to hit the ground first. I want them to load a bit more passively. So I don't want any points that are sticking up higher than the hoof wall. And once I started creating my bevel and rasp this hoof, I could see that there was more material to remove at the toe. So I got my nippers back out and removed that. And now I'm going to continue creating my bevel with my rasp, trying to remove those sharp edges or address any areas where the hoof wall is thicker than others. 
Otherwise, we're, we're about done with this hoof. I'll address any dishing or flaring uh, from the top. But yeah, just smoothing those edges, making sure nothing's sharp, and I'll pull this foot forward soon and finish the trim from the top. So now I'm looking at this hoof from the top, and this was kind of funny. From the ground, I was like, oh, that wall's really short. I hope I didn't remove too much hoof wall. And then I started pulling his hair up, and I realized, nope, he just has a lot of hair hanging down over the top of his wall. <laughs> So his hooves were much larger and longer than they looked initially, and I was less concerned then. But yeah, I'm just looking for any dishing or flaring from the top and trying to smooth those areas while creating the top side part of my bevel. And as you can see with this horse, his walls are very straight, so there's not much of that to address. Beautiful hooves. He's super sound on all surfaces, so there's not much to correct these days on this horse's hooves besides just removing excess material. Moving on to this horse's other front hoof, which is very similar to the one I just had forward on the stand. Really just finishing this bevel from the top side. He really doesn't have too much dishing and flaring, maybe just a little bit close to where the hoof contacts the ground. But I just want to give him a very strong bevel because if I do, he's less likely uh, to get any chips in his hooves. It prevents cracking. Uh, it's just a good finish to put on a barefoot horse's hooves at the end of a trim. So try to make it smooth and, and rounded and collect that hoof. Ever since I got a good look in his eyes, I just knew that he was special. Said he wanna take it slow, but I couldn't help that I wanted to take it to the next level. Cause I wanted that great love, like standing in the middle of a bonfire. You don't know how you got there, but you hold tight, knowing that you can't get burned. Just tell me how we lost track of everything but each other. I honestly don't know. And tell me how we messed up, drifting away from each other. Didn't Turned upside down I almost lost track of time As weeks went by I couldn't get him off my mind 